that well, so I'd be shouting through the mask, and he, you know, he wouldn't get it, and then Dan would yeah. be, it just, it created a lot of tension, like, and usually we need, there's like a lot of showering afterwards, right? <laughs> right. And sort of pulling away a little bit as well, you know, after, you know, just after he got kicked out of the house, but trying to figure out if we could help him, and how much that was just complicated, right? I tried to. Sure. Yeah, Mariah, getting Mariah was really hard. He didn't, you know, she's sort of feral, so he didn't want us right. to scare her. But we're, like, right there next to it, and it's like, yeah. you know, yeah. so she had, like, a butterfly <laughs> matter. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, I'll open up here, and I might have a couple of others, but yes, please, right there. So everyone in the room is wondering, is Peter still alive? And, yes. And, yeah. and I'm an art collector, and I do have some outsider people in my collection. I'm just curious what's happened is there a market for his art? Yeah. Do you mean two-parter? Yeah. I'll so, take the first part, I guess. <laughs> Peter is totally alive and in some ways better than ever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's living in a place called the Victory Center. He was the first person we showed the film to and he was, you know, he laughed and he cried and he, you know, said, don't change a thing. Um, it really, you know, has really sparked his life, and he's being—he's doing more artwork. He's probably painting more than ever now. Yeah, he's got a choir at the new place. He's got a choir. <laughs> <laughs> um, of about ten to twelve people, depending on the day. Yeah, um, and, and he teaches art class for too. like a big Christmas performance that's coming up. Yeah, and, and is there a market for his work? Is he, is he selling his work? Um, I mean, there are people that have expressed interest, and, in, you know, I mean, he's literally doing a portrait for yeah. the producer of the Tree of Life right now, who, uh, you know, so I, I think people are curious about yeah. it, um, yeah, but we'll we, see what happens. Along the way, we did we did a workshop at, with Mary Ellen Mark, who's an amazing mm-hmm. photographer, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we both have photography backgrounds, and she, she collects outsider art and was, was really interested in his work, but... But nothing's, like, broken, you know, I don't, I don't yeah. know if Peter is an art star, you know? Yeah. And, yeah, and he, and he would have he would have been here, but you know, it's the years have gone of on. Course, you know, yeah. it's yeah. gotten harder. So what what we did is we had a, like a gigantic uh, cast and crew um, preview at Pierogi Fest this past Pierogi. summer. Yeah, yeah. Eight, eight, <laughs> years, eight years to the day. The historic movie palace. Eight, eight, eight years to the day. All the people from the company. I just want to say, as a documentary lover, I, I have to give you guys credit because you didn't know how the story was going to end. You didn't know what was going to happen mm-hmm. to him. And I, and I don't know how that man is alive. I don't know how the art looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> we just leave it with David. <laughs> Is there a way for the public to be in touch with them somehow, like either through you guys or I got website? I got him a computer and <laughs> he's online a little bit. So so I went over there the other day um, to his place and he's like, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Facebook. And I'm like, what? You're you're on Facebook? And I went in and uh, he had figured out how to type in Facebook.com, so he was on the website. <laughs> he's still figuring out. But to answer your question, if you go to our website, almostthereproject.com. We have you can you can contact us through there and we can we'll send anything to yeah. Peter and we'll put you into good touch. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you very much for the humanity in the film. Uh, the and, and mentioning Nick and also Steve James as Stevie kept in the back of my yeah. head yeah. kept I kept thinking of the documentary filmmaker, not so much the subject. About what did you actually learn from this experience about Peter? And about mental health and about yourselves. Oh. That's heavy. Um, oh. First of all, I should say that Steve James has you know, yeah. been a huge mentor and was probably yeah. the person that helped us a lot and looked at the most cuts. And so we, we yeah. you know, we were grateful. We, we yeah. thank him, especially Aaron I mean, co-edited the Interrupters with yeah. Steve. Yeah, and I mean, I was um, in the middle of Interrupters right. when, when we all, had our show right. and when all of that happened um, with, and so, I mean, he gave me like a week off work because it was so intense and, yeah. you know, he's just been there at every step. I mean, I think supportive. that... Just like Kurt Tom in Chicago. With Peter, yeah. I think, you know, I, I think that I really believe that people who kind of can't leave childhood are people who are traumatized in childhood. I mean, you know, I know that's one sort of simple thing to say, and I don't know if we'll ever know everything about Peter, but, he, you know, I think it was just severe childhood trauma in part that has sort of made him keep holding on to it in a way that became grotesque. I mean, for myself, what have I learned? 
Um, never to spend eight years making a film again. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what else could I tell you? I mean, it was a long haul, you know. Um, and actually, you know, I've learned a lot about collaboration, both with subjects and, and with Aaron. And it's been a total honor to work with him. And Likewise. I'm, I'm grateful that we've been able to make it through. Yeah, what well, you learned? I, I, yeah, I, I gotta say, honestly, I'm still processing it all. Yeah. I mean, this is, we premiered the other night, so this is all kind of Brand raw new. and fresh yeah. for us. So, yeah. yeah, you know, come come to screening in a couple months and I'll have a very concise <laughs> Or next week in the Arclight. <laughs> yeah, yeah Arclight, LA, <laughs> 24th. And we'll go right here, please. Hey, guys. Jolene, hi. hi. <laughs> so, I, I want to know, at what point did you realize, okay, we have a feature, like, this is the mm. next project, mm. this is the Yeah, we, we we were both, you know, Dan's a teacher at um, Columbia College, College yeah, in Chicago, Chicago, and, you know, I was working on films with Car Templin, and so, you know, this just grabbed our interest, so we would just kept, we would just go and film and sort of sock it away, and we were just kind of doing it for a really long time. We were, yeah, at you first know? it was to help him out, I mean, the film sort of explains it, but I think that during the exhibit, and, and the desire for people to hear more from Peter is what made us start filming him more, and then when everything happened, that was sort of a train wreck for us. We felt mm -hmm. almost like we had to film, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But we'd always, we didn't, yeah, I don't know how to. Yeah, it evolved in a weird way. I mean, even before that, we were just doing it as a photography project. And we yeah. thought it'd be a really interesting book because all of Peter's stuff has such texture to right. it. So we're like, oh, this will be a great book. And then we'll interview him so we can just have an oral record and we can cite that for our interview, or, you know, for written stuff in the book. And then that just sort of grew into the movie. Right. So it was kind of accidental. So was it, I'm sorry. Just clarify, was it like maybe halfway through this 84%. Yeah. <laughs> no, about halfway through, maybe, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, Emma Blue, please. Yes. I know that Peter was the subject of your film, but I have to compliment you in making East Chicago the star. Woo! All right. Thank you. Yeah. Love for East Chicago. Are you going to Indiana? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to show it's it at really Progi Fest every year, if possible, or something. We'd like to have an annual Progi Fest screening, so yeah. maybe you can all visit. If you like brogies, that's good. Uh, let's go right here, please, the glasses. Um, I have a question for Dan. How, have you shown the film to your family, and how do they feel about being compared to Peter? Um, they like it. I have shown the film to my family. They're really profoundly moved by it, and I don't think that they have any trouble necessarily being compared to Peter as much as understanding that I was just trying to show what motivated this and how, for me, I think a lot of times filmmakers are trying to work out in, mm. in their present things that still haunt them from the past. Mm. And, you know, they love me and they, they like to keep it real, so they were cool with it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yellow scarf? You have the perfect ending. Uh, how, how would you have done if that was different? Um, did you work with other hypotheses? Oh, yeah. I mean, towards the end of the process, because, you know, oh, Peter's yeah. lived in two different senior homes He got kicked this. out of that home. <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he had to give his cat away, and that was, like, a, another huge oh. step in his kind of... DVD evolution. extra. Yeah. You know, and, yeah, we, we screened the film for people. We had it a, a list of questions, like, do you want to see this movie continue on another ten minutes and see him give up his cat? And, People are just like, oh, yeah. no, yeah. you have to perfect I mean, you know how it is with these people. Their life goes on. You know, you yeah. got to figure out where to, where to stop yeah. that. Yeah, the choir. I don't know. We'll, we'll where, put a lot of stuff out. Where are you guys on the list now? On his list. <laughs> I think we're probably hovering maybe in the, the bottom of the top 20, right? Let's <laughs> hope. Yeah. Maybe. Hopefully yeah. in the top 20. Hopefully, yeah. Um, right here, please. Um, I love the film. Um, Thanks. Um, I have a question about your film. Um, you mentioned that you Yes. yes. I was really struck by a lot of the composition, um, but I was interested in what sort of direction you gave to that video. So, so David is a, a, an amazing photographer. Like he, he's a gallery represented, world class photographer. He's doing a film of his own now in Chicago, and um, he sleeps like three hours a night, and he'll go out in any weather condition. He's like obsessed with weather, weather patterns and tracking it. So we would basically say, okay. You know, for this sequence, um, you know, we're hoping to get, you know, uh, 
some extreme snow, you know, yeah. will, will you go out at like two in the morning? He knew the area well. Snowstorm. So I drove him around. I did, sh you know, we showed him where Peter was and everything. The only shot I really asked for that I loved is the shot of the Ameristar and the talking deer. That was sort of my own personal. <laughs> I, you know, I just want that playing behind me on loop at my funeral. I, I, I can't even imagine how great that shot is. But. Excellent. <laughs> we have time for one last question. I'll go right here. Yes. Please. So, uh, two part question about the house. One, yeah. what happened to it? And two, can you convey to us in words what it smelled like in the basement? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> you want to take that one? Um, first part, it's still there. Peter owns it, so the city can't just raise it. And I think it's like um, more expensive for them to knock it down than to just do nothing. So, um, you know, at the moment, it's just there and boarded up and kind of keeps growing stuff out of it. Um, what did it smell like? I mean, I, mean I, I, I have a really intense sort of gag reflex. Um, so for me, I had to wear the mask with those sort of like dual, uh, I forget what they're called, particle I mean, thing chambers. Yeah. Dan, you were a Damp little bit cat, better. mold, Damp cat. caca, Damp as Peter cat. would say. It Come was on. Just, it was just yeah. funny. So you guys were all yeah. gas masks. Smelled like dead cat. How could you? Yeah. Awesome, oh. so. It's, it's oh, smelling. Want to go out on I mean, I don't know if we can do a scratch and sniff, but I don't think we want to for this film. Let's say that. We'll leave that to John Waters. No, no smell of vision. No, no smell of vision. No smell of vision for this yeah. one. Yeah. So unfortunately, we do have to wrap up. But I want to thank you so much again for bringing thank the work. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Dr. Lawrence. You know, if you have friends in LA, we're playing on Monday night, a week from now at the Arc Light. Uh, so tell your friends. Yeah. Tweet. Spread the word. Tweet, Tweet it up. Tweet Thanks, everybody.